Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 29th April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Abdul Kalam. So according to him, all birds find shelter during a rain, but eagle avoids rain by flying above the clouds. So here, whenever it is raining means here birds, they will find shelter. But the only bird that tries to avoid rain and it will, it will fly above the clouds is eagle. So you should be like a eagle because in our UPSC preparation and in this long journey, you will be coming up with ups and downs. So you should be stable and you should try to avoid them. And you have to focus on your preparation and try to maximize the productivity of the day. So every day at least try to increase the productivity so that you can easily achieve your goal of clearing UPSC. So now let us try to see first topic. So this topic it is regarding death penalty. So this topic is important from our polity point of view which mainly comes under GS paper too. And this topic is exclusively important from your means, not from prelims. So from prelims, you cannot expect any question from this death penalty. But from mains, you can expect a question for sure. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. And I will try my level best to make you understand this topic. So first, you have to know what is this death penalty. So now, first of all, I will be giving you dimensions. So first, you have to know what is this death penalty. And you have to know arguments, okay, arguments in favor, arguments in favor and you have to see arguments against this death penalty and apart from that you have to also focus on the Supreme Court judgments. So whenever you are writing any polity question, so you have to ensure that Supreme Court judgments regarding that topics to be written and even some articles in our Indian constitution or the sections of IPC or CRPC, they have to be included in the question and they have to be highlighted by underlining them. So this is the way to write polity questions. Okay. So if you are talking about why this death penalty is in news. So on April 22nd, a bench of Supreme Court of India, as you all know, hierarchy of courts. So we have lower courts, that is district courts. We have high courts. We have Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, it is the apex court of the country, right? So, here we also see appeal, okay, appeal from the district court to high court and high court to Supreme Court. So, this court, okay, if you are talking about this case especially, so the name of this case is Irfan, Irfan versus State of MB. So, in this case especially here, Supreme Court, it is trying to identify some mitigating circumstances and to ensure convict centric approach. So in this approach, they mainly focusing on this capital punishment or death penalty. So death, this death penalty of this uh, capital punishment that should be given in the rarer of rarest cases. Okay. So here Supreme Court of India, which is mainly going to examine this routine and abrupt way in which trial judges are often imposing death penalty on convicts. So they are mainly going to see this death penalty, imposition of this death penalty. So now let us try to understand first of all what is this death penalty or capital punishment. So death penalty is also called as capital punishment. So in this capital punishment, whoever the person who convicted, okay, so that convicted person will be given death as punishment okay so it is one of the highest penalty awarded to an accused person and it is mainly given in extreme cases extremely severe cases for example in the case of murder rape and as well as treason, etc so death penalty is mainly seen as the most suitable punishment and effective determinant for the worst crimes okay so here Many people, they mainly oppose this capital punishment. So there is a debate which is mainly going on in different news channels regarding this death penalty. So now let us try to see the arguments in favor of this death punishment. So first and the foremost thing here is retribution. Okay, retribution means nothing but so people, they should get punishment. They deserve it. Okay, 
so based on the severity of their crime so they have to deserve in proportion of their punishment so if they are doing a less crime means they will be getting less punishment and if they are getting if you are if they are doing very severe crime or serious crime means they will be given this death penalty and next one is deterrence deterrence means we are mainly avoiding the same person to do the same crime once again okay for example if you see there will be the serious uh, killers okay serious or chain killers will be there there were number of uh, movies also in telugu there is one movie called as rakshas shudu so in that movie one psycho he will be killing uh, children okay and even there are number of uh, movies that are made talking about a serious uh, serial killers okay so if that serial killer who is not at all arrested or he is not given punishment means if he is present in the normal public means what happened so there will be lead to the further crimes in the society so deterrence is very very important so when we are going for this capital punishment so here it will be helpful mainly to stop the killing of another person okay so this is about arguments in the favor of this capital punishment so we are talking about argument against so deterrence is ineffective so there is a statistical evidence that it doesn't confirm that deterrence works some of those who executed may not have been capable of being deterred because of mental illness or defect so some people they will be having some psychological diseases they are mainly facing so because of this uh, psychological uh, is diseases or mental illness and some defects so they can't go for deterrence and next one is execution of innocent so many a times what happen so in this capital punishment uh, when we are taking that decision very very fast means what happen sometimes innocent people may also get killed okay and next one is no rehabilitation so whenever there is a capital punishment which is given to convicted person means so he will be not coming back to the society so because of this there will be no rehabilitation so these are the arguments which are against the capital punishment so if you are talking about some supreme court rulings in the previous uh, cases so the first and the foremost case here is jag mohan singh versus state of up 1973 case so in this case supreme court held that according to article 21 so article 21 talks about right to privacy uh, right to life and personal liberty right so because of this uh, capital punishment which is mainly violating article 21 of the individual okay so thus this uh, death sentence which mainly imposed after a trial in accordance with this legally established procedure under the crpc so this crpc that is criminal procedure code which mainly talks about is death penalty so under this uh, criminal procedure code whenever death sentence which is awarded means that will be like violating article 21 of indian constitution so it is unconstitutional under article 21 so the next case here is rajendra prasad versus state of up 1979 case so in this case supreme court said that okay supreme court said that if murderers operation of a criminal geopard is Uh, social security in a persistent plan and perilous fashion then his enjoyment of fundamental rights may be annihilated okay the supreme court mainly said that if there is any murderous operation of a criminal which mainly jeopardizes social security okay in a persistent plan and perilous fashion then the enjoyment of this fundamental right may be rightly annihilated that means what happen if any person who is going for doing any crime okay any crime then that crime which is having some negative impact on the social security of other people okay in a persistent manner or in a planned manner or in a privileged fashion then the fundamental rights of that person will be rightly annihilated and next important famous case is uh, bachan singh versus state of punjab 1980 case so in this case supreme court said one important thing here is so this uh, death penalty should be awarded in a rarest of rarer cases that is whenever this crime it is very serious and in and heinous crimes so in that case only death penalty should be awarded by the courts so this is the thing which mainly said by this bachan singh versus state of punjab 1980 case and one more case here is bachi singh versus state of punjab 1983 case so in this case the supreme court lay down some certain considerations for determining whether it will comes under this rarest of rarer case or not 
so here you have to remember these uh, four cases so two cases from the state of up and two cases from the state of punjab so in this way you can easily remember these cases along with the years as well and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding free bees so free are free bees affecting the economic growth of india so this article is very important because in the coming up years so there are number of states they are going for elections so this concept will be seen in news for sure so free bees nothing but in the election campaigning political parties announces that they will be going for providing of free electricity and for example laptops bicycles okay uh, etc so this mainly come or some examples of this freebies so now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail so this article is important from polity and even economy point of view and this topic is important from your mains not from your prelims so if you see context it mainly says that so recently our 15th finance commission chairperson so who is our 15th finance commission chairperson that is nk singh so nk singh he mainly ad uh, addressed okay addressed in delhi school of economics so in that address of nk singh he mainly focused on free bees and what will be impact of this free bees on economic growth okay so he mainly said that these free bees they are very much harmful for the long term economic growth and he also focused on the need to distinguish between productive and as well as unproductive form of welfare spending yes government will be going for welfare spending so central government will be coming up with the welfare spending and even state governments they are having their own programs policies of welfare spending so they need to be very much aware regarding whether it is productive or unproductive form of this welfare spending so this is about introduction and now let us try to understand what is this freebies so freebies is nothing but political parties they promise to offer for example free electricity free water supply monthly allowances for unemployed and as well as daily wage workers women and even they will say sometimes they will provide some gadgets like laptops free gas stoves um smartphones etc and why they will announce these all things mainly to attract the votes okay to secure votes of the people and to win the elections so they will be announcing or they will be promising this freebies so what are the arguments in favor of this freebies whether this freebies are essential or not yes especially people okay in every country in every country for example if you are taking india so states do have state uh, does not have especially some certain levels of development especially some states are good in development and some states are not much good so in this uh, states where there is no proper development so whenever there is election time means so there is, uh, the people's expectations will be very much high right so to uh, to act or to give the trust okay for the people so these political parties they will be announcing some freebies okay so people will be thinking that this freebies will be helpful for their development and next one is so these free bees they will help less developed states so with the states that have comparatively low level of development when we are comparing with the larger share of population and if the state which is less developed and it is having large amount of uh, poor people okay and in this areas political parties they will be going for announcing of free bees so free bees they will become need or demand based and it is very much essential to offer the people such subsidies and it will be helpful for upliftment of people so these are some important arguments which are favoring this freebies and if you are talking about what are the issues regarding this freebies so first one is whenever government is announcing to provide the free electricity or free water then that will be increasing the economic burden okay economic burden on the center as well as state and next one is whenever the freebies are announced means it will be affecting free and fair elections so it will be disturbing the level playing field and also it eats the purity of poll process and next one is it is against equality principle so whenever there is a distribution of this private goods or services which are not for public purposes and whenever we are giving those private goods or services uh, by using the public funds means it mainly violates article 14 that is equality before law and if you are talking about one famous judgment regarding this free bees is s subramanyam balaji versus government of tamil nadu 2013 so in this case supreme court mainly said that 
unrealistic poll promises and freebies they are a serious issue which mainly disturb the level playing field in elections it is mainly affecting free and fair elections and what is the way forward so instead of announcing freebies so government okay government need to go for judicial, uh, judicial demand based freebies okay you need to go for proper policy implementation for the development of so and so area and as you all know india it is a large country it is second large populate populous country and we have huge set of people who are below poverty line and it is very much important to have all people who are accommodated in the development plan of the country so we need to come up with the policy and that policy so people should be participated and we need to differentiate between what is the need of subsidies and as well as freebies so we need to understand what will be the impact of freebies on our economy okay and next one is first of all we need to distinguish between subsidy and as well as freebies and next one is next and foremost one is awareness of people so people should realize the wrong they do in selling their votes for freebies okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see one more interesting topic that is russia's roulette with gas supplies so in today's lecture we studied that poland and belgium so for this poland and belgium russia stopped this gas supply so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations so here you can get a question regarding a map based or map based question from this poland and belgium and countries which are surrounding this poland and belgium so to remember the countries of europe i gave with i came up with a simple and some silly mnemonics silly stories so that you can access when you go for purchasing of this uh, geography module in our rathod science academy there we dealt with india indian geography world geography and as well as world maps and indian maps so there i came up i discussed some silly techniques or silly mnemonics such that you can easily remember the states or easily remember the countries okay of uh, different continents like uh, asia europe and as well as north america south america australia okay so you can purchase that course and the details you can get in our rathor sai academy website so if you see context it mainly says that russian energy company that is gazprom has stopped gas supplies to bulgaria and as well as poland so it is not belgium it is bulgaria okay so bulgaria and poland and citing their failure to pay in rubles so why so why russia stopped the gas supply for this bulgaria and as well as poland so if you see they these countries like bulgaria and poland they said that they are not going to pay in the rubles so what are the agreement this bulgaria and poland had with russia so in that agreement it mainly said that the payment for this gas supplies will be done in euros and as well as dollars only so now russia says that you have to pay in rubles so why because russia which is mainly banned from this fifth payment system so that russia which is now asking to pay in rubles but these countries like bulgaria and poland they are mainly saying that we can't pay in rubles we can pay in the euro and as well as the dollars so this is a what that is made written in our agreement so because of this poland and bulgaria they accused russia of breach of contract and in that contract the payments should be done in either in euros or dollars only so how will this stop of uh, gas supplies to this bulgaria and uh, poland which mainly affect them so actually if you are talking about poland it will get 40% of natural gas from russia and it has been also working on alternatives for this gas supply for many years and in the immediate scenario now it will loss about 5 billion cubic metric uh, met meters of gas it was said to get from this gas from so because of this ban of this uh, supply of gas from this russia to poland so actually poland will be getting 40% of this natural gas and it will be coming up with shortfall of 5 billion cubic meters of gas and here it is going to get this uh, supply of this gas from germany and if you see about this bulgaria so bulgaria will be getting 77% of natural gas from this russia so it will be going to face a bigger problem here 
So even Energy Minister of this Bulgaria, he said that so the country is having a reserves for another month and by this time they have to look for the alternatives okay, to get this natural gas. So if you're talking about why these two countries are targeted by Russia, so what happened? So if you're talking about Poland, Poland became a major gateway for supply of military hardware to Ukraine and even Russia confirmed that it is also sending tanks to Ukraine. So to counter this here Russia stopped gas exports to this Poland and next one is Bulgaria. So after a new liberal government took office last fall, it has cut many of ties with this Moscow that is Russia and not only it has supported the West sanctions against Russia and even it also hosted Western fighter jet as a new NATO outpost of its Black Sea coast. So because of this actions taken by these two countries, here Russia came up with this move. And now let us try to see will other countries hit with the similar stoppage of this gas supply or not. So especially there are a number of European countries that are dependent on this Russia for their gas imports. So if you are talking about Russia which mainly supplies gas via pipelines to 23 countries in Europe among European Union members and so far only Hungary. Hungary has officially agreed to make this double payments okay and the rest they mainly rejected this demand. But however, even if no other countries agrees to this Russia's rubble payment mechanism, so there won't be any further cuts of supplies. Okay, so if you're talking about the reports which are released, so four European buyers, they have already started making gas payments in rubles and while 10 European companies, they have opened accounts with this Gazoprom bank, okay, to make this rubble payments. So if you're talking about what will be the impact of this move. So whenever there is gas supply which mainly stopped means that will lead to fuel inflation and that will further erode the economic activity in that so and so country. So actually you're facing a very very bad situation because of this COVID-19 pandemic and even Russia-Ukraine crisis. So it will also lead to major recession in the continent's industrial powerhouse. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding AFSPA. So keen on lifting AFSPA from Northeast. So this article it is talking about Armored Forces Special Police Act, Special Powers Act, okay, Armored Forces Special Powers Act. So this article is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper too. And now let us try to see context. So if you see context, it mainly says that in a bid to completely lift this Armored Forces Special Powers Act of 1958 in the northeastern region. So there are many efforts which are mainly taken by central government to improve the land and order situation, land and order situation in this region. So this is the thing which mainly said by our Prime Minister. So if you see some more important details which are given, it mainly says that. So addressing a peace, addressing a peace, unity and development rally in this central Assam Dimfu region. So he said that this AFSPA could be withdrawn partially, okay, will be withdrawn partially from Assam, Manipur and Nagaland that is from April 1st due to some peaceful conditions that are mainly seen. So because of this peaceful condition that is seen in this region since 2014, now in Assam and as well as Manipur and even in Nagaland, so there is a withdrawn of partial AFSPA that is mainly seen and also we came up with this Bodo Peace Accord. So this Bodo Accord also opened doors for the permanent peace. And next one is this AFSPA which mainly remain enforced in many states of northeastern uh, north states for decades. And our Prime Minister he said that we moved it from many areas due to better administration and as well as return to the peace. Okay, and there is also decreasing of incidence of violence in these areas since past, 80, uh, past 8 years. And next important point here is crediting the steady run of peace in the northeast to the collective efforts of the state governments and the people. He said that center was trying to normalize the situation in the remaining areas of ASPA. Okay, so here they are also focusing to remain, rem, uh, remove this AFSPA in the other remaining areas as well. So once they achieve this peace and stability in this region, they will be going for removing of this AFSPA. So if we are talking about some facts regarding this Armored Force Special Powers Act 1958, it is an act of parliament and this act which mainly gives the armored forces the power to maintain public order in especially disturbed areas. So 
who will decide which area is a disturbed area okay so the power to declare any territory as uh, as a disturbed area so this power which is mainly vested with the center okay so if you see further more details here so this afspa which mainly forces the authority to use force or to even open fire after warning a person who is found to be in contravention of a law so this disturbed area it is one where there we can use armed forces and we can also use some civil power if at all it is necessary so under section 3 of aspa here any area can be declared as a disturbed okay disturbed area so whenever there are some disputes between the members of different religious communities or different racial uh, and as well as different language people or religious group and even different caste or community here and this act will also allows the forces to arrest a person and to enter and search premises without a warrant as well okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it mainly says that india's position on sanctions hasn't changed a bit says our external affairs okay so this article is very very important from our gs paper too so if you see here as you all know that our prime minister he is going to visit some european countries on may okay in the may first week especially so because of this so this article is in news so india's position on sanctions against russia so especially us and some us allied countries and some western countries they impose sanctions on russia because of this russia ukraine conflict so india's position on this uh, sanctions against russia has not changed so this is the thing which mainly said by our ministry of external affairs so ministry the ministry made the assertion while speaking about likelihood of renewed request from this european countries so from european countries they repeatedly requesting india to support this sanctions but in this context india said that we have not changed our decision we are very much strong regarding the decision on sanctions on russia so in the first foreign visit in 2022 our prime minister he is going to visit germany denmark and uh, germany denmark and even france here so he is going to attend nordic summit so you have to know which are the nordic uh, countries so nordic countries are also called as scandinavian countries so we have norway sweden and finn that is no sweet finn we have iceland and denmark so these are the five scandinavian countries you have to see the location and if you see where is france is located so here we have france here we have germany okay between this france we have luxembourg belgium netherlands so by using this luxo we have to watch the germs which are present on hand and we should we should not go here and there because corona virus is there okay so here from luxo we have this luxembourg and from germ you can remember this belgium and nowhere means netherlands okay so luxembourg belgium netherlands so in this way i came up with silly silly tech uh, stories silly silly techniques such that you can easily remember this uh, locations of this uh, countries because logic it logic so we can't remember for long but silly things we can remember for long right and in this context our prime minister attendance in the second nord summit would give the relationship with denmark finland iceland norway and as well as sweden so here uh, we will be going to have a good relation with these five countries so once the summit is done there will be the some highlights of the summit so we are going to discuss that in our future lectures and next topic here is india bangladesh discuss high level visit so this article is important again from our international relations which mainly comes in a gs paper too so if you see context it mainly says that our external affairs minister he mainly held talks with his counterpart of bangladesh and he said that dhaka it is a first step in the two nation neighborhood visit which mainly undertaken by our external affairs minister along with some indian top diplomats right so if you see details it mainly says that so one important cause of concern of these both countries that is india and bangladesh here is there is high energy prices because of this russia ukraine crisis and in this talk they made a talk about how to promote trade commerce and as well as connectivity especially between these two countries so this is about this topic here one homework i want to give you is try to refer some facts or areas of cooperation between india and bangladesh so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding centers employment survey so centers employment survey finds 
addition of 4 lakh jobs. So this article is important from our economy point of view which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. Now let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see context it mainly says that over 4 lakh jobs they were created in firms with 10 or more workers in 9 selected sectors that is between October to December 2021. So here in 9 selected sectors about 4 lakh jobs were created. So it is according to Labor and Employment Ministry. Third quarterly employment survey in this quarterly employment survey report it mainly said that in nine sec selected sectors there are about four lakh jobs they were created so if you see details it mainly says that the ministry's establishment uh, based survey so it is a establishment based survey and which mainly covers 10384 units so in this uh, extent in this context they mainly found that the employment which had been increased from 3.1 crores in july september 2021 to 3.145 crores in the next quarter and this survey which mainly covered manufacturing sector construction trade transport education health accommodation restaurants and even it and bbo financial services they were mainly accounted here and the manufacturing sector it also accounted for 39 percentage of units okay so here manufacturing sector which mainly accounted 39 percentage of the units and later on education which mainly uh, which mainly providing about 22 percentage of uh, new jobs and if you're talking about some facts regarding this quarterly employment survey so it is mainly part of all india quarterly establishment based employment survey and it mainly covered some establishments which are mainly employing about 10 or more workers in organized uh, segment in nine sectors and there are about nine sectors like manufacturing construction trade transport education health accommodation restaurant and it bpo services and this sector which mainly accounts the majority of total employment in the non-form establishments so if you're talking about objective when we are having this data that will be helpful for national policy on employment so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's questions the first one is so these clouds are one of the highest clouds in the atmosphere and they also called with thunder heads and produce rains thunder lightning so highest cloud means we have cirrus clouds okay but this zero cumulus clouds the option which is given here so it will be not causing much rainfall so here the correct option is cumulonimbus clouds and next one is consider the following statements regarding insulation which is nothing but radiant energy received from the sun in the form of heat and light so first one is insulation received on the earth surface of earth which mainly decreases from uh, equator to poles so if you ex if you say this is sun and this is earth so here in this area in this equator area we will be getting direct or vertical rays but in the poles we will be getting the slanting rays yes this statement first is correct and during summer solstice maximum insulation received at the ground surface that is between 30 to 40 degrees so in the summer solstice we know that itc is an intertropical convergence zone which is mainly moving or shifting towards northwards that is between 25 to 30 that is almost 30 to 40 degrees that is in the north latitudes but not in the south latitude so you can eliminate this statement and insulation received is comparatively higher in the outer limit of atmosphere than that of the surface of the earth yes of course so this thing you will be get clarity when you studied this heat budget and here you have to choose the correct answers or correct statements from the code so the correct option will be one and three only so here second will be the north latitudes but not the south so this is about yesterday's questions and answers and today's questions are the first one regarding this solar radiation and scattered and reflected and next one is uh, consider the following statement regarding cyclones so these are the two questions for the practice so prelims is very very near and i hope you are doing well and try to increase at least one to two hours of preparation daily and try to practice as many prelims questions as possible daily so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so before that i want to make a small announcement 
Read Rathod Sai's You Are Going to Come Up with a New Batch of This Mains Answer Writing Practice that is going to be started in the May 1st week. So this course is very very advantageous, very very efficient and that will helpful to improve your answer writing skills for sure. So please join this course and if you have any queries regarding this course, contact me on this number 8074765513. Okay. And this is also WhatsApp number. You can message me on this number as well. So apart from that, we are ready to launch this pen drive courses for your entire foundational course of 2023. Here each and every subtopic is discussed very clearly. And we are also discussing previous year's prelims and mains questions. We will be also giving you some practice questions as well. So that it will be very, very essential to improve your conceptual clarity. So nowadays the trends of this UPSC had been changed. They are not asking fact based questions. They started asking analysis based questions. To answer those analysis based questions in both prelims and mains, you need to get a conceptual clarity that you can get from these courses that you are offering in Rathod's IES. And the cost of this entire foundational course is very much affordable. It is 60,000 rupees and the validity is two years. So try to utilize this opportunity and for the details please contact us on this number so if you want to take individual courses like only polity only history economy geography ethics like that you can take the single modules and these single modules is also available in our website okay so you can register in our website Sathors is academy and there you can click on the course list so you can see the wide range of courses that we are offering and you can go for purchasing after watching the demo videos okay and one more thing is if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf okay so this is our today's hindu date is 29th april 2022 and this is delhi edition so the first topic is regarding AFSPA that is Armored Forces Special Parts Act I discussed and there is one article regarding this 5G services. So you have to know what is the difference between this 5G and 4G so that will be very important from your prelims point of view. Okay, so actually why this 5G services is in news because so government is now confident regarding resolving of issues which are related to high spectrum, high spectrum pricing with the industry. Okay. So here we need to know about pricing of the spectrum as well. So actually the spectrum case which is mainly going on. So we have to do this topic in a very great detail. And next if you move forward. So leave this uh, city page. But here you can see there is a one article regarding e-waste disposal. So electronic waste it is a one of the important challenge that we are facing. Okay in this uh, century. So here we need to make adopting of best practices, okay, best international practices, they need to be studied and NGOs are mainly working on rag pickers and as well as waste collectors, they should be brought on to the board and we need to promote the proper efficient disposal of this e-waste in e-waste, actually electronic waste is very very dangerous actually because we are using different elements in this electronic chips or semiconductor chips etc. That will be also having some negative impact on, an, on our environment as well. So please give me some measures how to deal with this e-waste, electronic waste processing. And now let's try to move forward. And in this state page, I found that Maharashtra reduced VAT, that is value added tax on natural gas, but it did not hike fuel tax. So you need to know difference between what is this VAT and what is this fuel tax. And if you move forward, now there is editorial page. So in this editorial page, I discussed regarding this death penalty and there is one article regarding this COVID-19 vaccines, especially for children. So you have to go through that. And in this open page, I discussed regarding this free beaks, how they are affecting economic growth. And there is one article regarding the role of women. Women are at forefront of government's drinking water initiative in Bihar. So here you can add this article as a case study like when you are writing answer regarding women empowerment. And now let us move on to this text and context I discussed regarding this Russia gas supplies issue. And if you move forward here this article I discussed regarding India's position and sanctions has not changed. And I discussed regarding this India Bangladesh issue. And one more article that is important is Russia-Ukraine conflict shows need of self-reliance. 
you can read that topic that is very important and if you move forward in this news page i discussed regarding the center's employment survey and if you move forward in this world page you can see z's global security initiative looks to counter this quad grouping so here you have to know about what is global security initiative so a new global security initiative which mainly put forth uh, by this chinese president and he said that it will be looking into how to counter this us indo pacific strategy and quad and even accus okay so here china also coming to propose this global security initiative so it is mainly staying committed to vision of a common comprehensive cooperative and sustainable security so this is the thing which mainly said by xi jinping and if you move forward to this business page you can see reporting cyber breaches made mandatory for all firms so here uh, what happened cyber security or cyber threats or one of the important issue now we are facing in our indian economy so there are number of companies they are mainly having hacked okay so because of this there is some efficiency that is efficiency threat that is mainly seen so because of this we are having certain certain is india's uh, computer emergency response team so this certain which mainly made an important mandatory for all service providers intermediaries and even data center providers corporates they need to report the cyber incidents within 6 hours of their detections so after uh, within the 6 hours of detention okay detection they have to they have to inform to this certain so this will be helpful for india's overall cyber security position okay so this is the thing which mainly given by some directions of this certain so you have to know some facts regarding this certain and uh, okay regarding this topic and next one is coal will be a key energy source even in 2040 so world coal association which mainly said that coal would remain the most significant contributor in our energy sector even in 2040 okay you have to know about which are the coal reserves which are present in india so which type of coal is present in india like peat or lignite bituminous coal or anthracite coal and you have to know what are the advantages of this uh, coal and as well as disadvantages of this coal you can also talk about even uh, tax which is imposed on the coal uh, coal imports as well so this is about in detail regarding this topic and these are some dimensions you have to think about so by this i am concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathod's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and please uh, register in our website for the extraordinary courses that we are offering and you can also join this mains answer writing practice so the time table or schedule is given in description box you can download that time table as well then you will be getting an idea so by this i'm concluding thank you so much